Good evening, everybody. It's nice to be back. We've had two weeks off and it feels like a long time, actually, since we've had our Tuesday evening service. So uh, to th tonight we're celebrating the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene, who's one of my all time favourite saints. I quite often say each, each saint's my favourite every, every Thursday. Um, I, I am a bit of a, I do like most of them, but Mary Magdalene has a special place in my heart. So I've got a sermon for you this evening that I gave um, a couple of years ago, I think. Um, so I'm sort of recycling it tonight. Um, so a um, slightly longer sermon than usual on Tuesday night, but hopefully uh, you'll find it interesting um, and enjoyable. Um, also, this is the first time I've sort of spoken live um, since our dear or dear organist at Baldra died, um, John Y. Brow. So this evening we'll be remembering him in our intercessions and thinking about his family as they mourn his loss and, and all of us as we mourn him as well and, and as we're unable to attend altogether for his funeral. But what we will be doing for John is next year we're going to have a big celebration of his life, a special service, hopefully that when next year we'll be able to have hymns, we'll be able to have lots of music and we'll ha give him a fantastic tribute um, next year. But there'll be a quiet funeral for just his family um, this coming Monday at two o'clock. What I'm suggesting is if any of you would like to show your respects on the day of his funeral, I'm suggesting that people line the street on Clown Road, which is the road that goes from the Rhodes roundabout up to the next roundabout towards Clown. Um, because the hearse will be travelling past that way on its way to the cemetery for the private burial with the family. So Clown Road is the place to go at quarter past two and hopefully sometime between quarter past two and half past two the hearse will travel past and you'll be able to kind of um, show your respects um, that way. Obviously um, do maintain social distancing um, when you're standing by the roadside but if you would like to um, show your respects on the day that's the best thing to do is to go to Clown Road at 2.15 on Monday the 27th of July. The other exciting thing is that we are opening our churches again and for the first time we'll be opening Bulbra Church this coming Sunday at 10am. Um, we've marked out the church for social distancing so we're basically sitting in every other pew socially distanced um, and we'll be receiving communion in one kind, so that's just the bread form. Um, there won't be any singing, but it will still be um, fantastic to gather in our beautiful church building to worship together. And we'll be celebrating the Feast of St James. We'll also be having a moment during the service to remember all of those who've lost their lives during this difficult time and all the other bereavements that we've had. Um, so it's a time for lament a time for thanksgiving and a time for hope for the future. So do come and join us if you feel safe to do so um, on Sunday. I'm hoping to be able to live stream the service. If the signal's not strong enough, I may need to record the service and then upload it later in the day. But by hook or by crook, there will be an option to watch the service online as well as attend in person. So I think they're all my notices. There's quite a few. Sorry about that. Um, so we'll begin our service. And the words should come up on the screen. Oh, gosh, I'm trying to remember what I'm doing now. Right. There we are. Hopefully you can all see that. So we begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we take a moment to consider how we have been this week with other people and how we've been with God and where we've got it wrong. And so we come before our forgiving God. We have not always worshipped God, our creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our saviour. Christ, have mercy. 
Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit, our guide. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we have the collect for the feast of St Mary Magdalene. Almighty God, whose risen son first entrusted to Mary Magdalene the good news of his resurrection, grant that we may serve you in the power of him who has ascended to you, his God and Father, Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the Song of Songs. Upon my bed at night I sought him whom my soul loves. I sought him but found him not. I called him but he gave no answer. I will rise now and go about the city in the streets and in the squares. I will seek him whom my soul loves. I sought him but found him not. The sentinels found me as they went about in the city. Have you seen him whom my soul loves? Scarcely had I passed them when I found him whom my soul loves. I held him and would not let him go until I brought him into my mother's house and into the chamber of her that conceived me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to him, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the, her feet. They said to her, woman why are you weeping she said to them they've taken away my lord and i do not know where they've laid him when she had said this she turned round and saw jesus standing there but she did not know that it was jesus jesus said to her woman why are you weeping for whom are you looking supposing him to be the gardener she said to him sir if you've carried him away tell me where you have laid him and i will take him away jesus said to her mary she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mary Magdalene is a survivor. She is one of the most enigmatic people in the Gospels and probably the most enigmatic woman in the Gospels, the only woman given a full name in the New Testament. Mary Magdalene is a survivor because we know that Jesus drove seven demons from her. We don't know what language we would use now to describe what Jesus did for her. But my suspicion is that she came to Jesus deeply troubled, perhaps with a severe mental health problem and that he healed her fully of that. Mary Magdalene, as we come to remember her today, is also a survivor of a terrible fake news campaign that has raged since the Middle Ages about her. Many people conflated Mary Magdalene with Mary of Bethany, who outrageously anoints Jesus' feet with expensive perfume and dries them with her hair, and also with the woman caught in adultery. The woman to whom Jesus says, go and sin no more. These two other women are two separate people, not to be confused with Mary Magdalene, whom we are celebrating today. 
unfortunately, because people made these three women into one, Mary Magdalene has always been depicted as a reformed prostitute. She is always depicted in racy bright red robes, her hair flowing uncovered and in a posture of repentance. The truth is that Mary Magdalene is the apostle to the apostles. The reason she is honoured with being the first to see the resurrected Christ is that Mary stays when everyone else leaves. The disciples led by Peter all profess at the Last Supper that they will stay with Jesus come what may, even to the death. And they all agree. But when it comes to it, the name repeated through all four Gospels as being there as Jesus is crucified and put in the tomb and rises from the dead is Mary Magdalene. Mary stays. She is fierce. She has had a hard life. Jesus cast seven demons from her. Who knows how long she'd lived with them or how old she was when Jesus healed her. But perhaps because she's seen pain and suffering on a scale most people never experience, that is what makes her believe in resurrection. Because Mary experienced resurrection the first time she met Jesus. Jesus gave her her life back when he cast those demons out of her. It was like she was alive again, resurrected. Perhaps it is this that makes her stay. She's not only there at the very end for Jesus, but from the moment of her healing, she, along with other women who have been healed, fund Jesus' ministry from their own money. So she was probably a wealthy woman too. Mary is not afraid to look death in the eye. Mary is not afraid to sit in silence, to sit in her grief. She sets her face like flint, to use the psalmist's phrase, and she waits. Mary Magdalene is a saint of defiant hope. I wanted to show you this beautiful icon of Mary Magdalene, written by Brother Robert Lentz. It's a modern uh, he's a modern um, icon writer. We call it an icon painter, a writer. That's the terminology we always use when we talk about icons. And this icon is the way I like to picture her. You'll see that Mary is holding and pointing to an egg. This is an ancient story about Mary. The Eastern Orthodox tradition tells us that after the ascension, she journeyed to Rome, where she was admitted to the court of Tiberius Caesar because of her high social standing. After describing how poorly Pilate had administered justice at Jesus' trial, she told Caesar that Jesus had risen from the dead. To help explain his resurrection, she picked up an egg from the dinner table. Caesar responded that a human being could no more rise from the dead than that the egg in her hand turned red. And the egg turned red immediately. Here in this icon, you can see Mary's defiant hope in the resurrection. Her role is to point to the resurrected Jesus. Her song is, I've seen the Lord. Mary Magdalene is a survivor. She stands as the saint of defiant hope. She stands as living proof that resurrection is possible. She stays with Jesus. She never leaves his side. No wonder she wants to cling to him when she sees him in the garden. Mary Magdalene is someone I would like to be around. Someone that loves Jesus more than everyone else. Someone that has been ignored, vilified, not believed by the world, as painted as a prostitute, but who is safe in the knowledge that her dear rabbi friend Jesus knows her intimately and knows her name. I have seen the Lord is her song. May it be my song. May it be your song. May it be our song. Alleluia. Amen. I think we all need a little bit of defiant hope at the moment, don't we? So in peace, let us pray to Jesus our Lord, whoever lives to make intercession for us. 
saviour of the world. Be present in all places of suffering, violence and pain. And bring hope even in the darkest night. Inspire us to continue your work of reconciliation today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, empower by your Spirit all Christian people. We pray for the work of your Church in every land, the work of your Church online, over the telephone, in communities, in prisons, in schools, in every place. And we pray for all those preparing for returning to worship in our buildings. We pray for safety and for hope. Give us grace to proclaim the gospel joyfully in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd and guardian of our souls, guide and enable all who lead and serve this community and those on whom we depend for our daily needs. Grant that we may seek the peace and welfare of this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great physician, stretch out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness and peace to all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We pray especially in our community for the Reverend David Hull and his wife Chris. We also pray for Arthur Stamper, who's recovering from a pacemaker operation. And we think of all those known to us who are in need of our prayers and we name them quietly before God now. Fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Conqueror of death, remember for good those whom we love but see no longer. We especially remember at this time our dear friend and organist, John Wybrow. Help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of your eternal victory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So now we come to share our virtual peace over the airwaves. Uh, you can do this in whichever way you like. You can write a comment underneath or you can do a little thumbs up or a heart or whichever, whichever you like. As long as it's not the angry symbol, that, that's, not, that's, not, that's not the right one to use for the peace. OK, <laughs> Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another a virtual sign of peace or a sign of peace with those who are in our households. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Your, your little peace greetings. <laughs> I'm just preparing the table while we share the peace with one another. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son, Jesus Christ, to be our saviour. 
His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St James, St John the Baptist, Mary Magdalene and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So we pray for the coming of the kingdom in the words our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Body of Christ broken for us, keep us in eternal life. Amen. blood of Christ shed for us. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. And so we say together, thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, 
love you more dearly and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bow our heads to receive God's blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for coming everybody. It's been really nice to celebrate again with you all and I look forward to seeing some of you at Bulbo Church at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Uh, we are going to be recommending wearing a face covering at church so do bring your masks or scarves um, along with you to church on Sunday and we'll see you then. Take care everyone. Bye. <laughs>